don't know of any one lesson. You may not be shouting when it's over, but it'll save you. It'll keep your faith working. And you'll have everything that God promised you in this word. Are you there? So tonight, so if, once they get it up on the screen, it's coming. It's, say it's coming. I don't know what happened up there. Is anybody in the sound room? I didn't even have to sing some more. Holy is the Lamb. Who is that Lamb? Okay, there it is. Okay. Loving the unlovable. If you don't learn this, your faith will not work. Listen to me. If you don't learn this, you might you can fast for 21 days. The greatest and all of the benefits of fast for 21 days is losing some pounds. You can come down here, we're gonna pour a bucket of oil, a tub of oil on you, you'll be a grease monkey. Slick, but there's nothing gonna change. If you don't learn how to love the unlovable, I grant you, you'll stay in jail. Because Satan is forever trying to find that one particular person, place, or thing that, that will get you to take an offense. And he don't care who it is. It could be a loved one, a relative, a friend. The devil really don't care. He just wants to find out who rubs you wrong. And if you don't learn how to love the unlovable, to be kind to the unkind, I assure you, your faith will not work. And let me say this to you. The last thing you want to do is go into a coma out of faith. Because there's a lot of times we want people to pray for someone who has offense in their heart. And sometimes people come down here want you to lay hands on them and they know they got an offense in their heart. There's no use praying if you got offense. You've got to learn how to love the unlovable. I'm going to get into it right there. From the man who cuts you off in traffic <laughs> to the former friend who has offended you. And we all get hurt by the thoughtless or disobedient actions of others. My question to you, how do you respond to someone else's reactions? Because God would not... Judge me based upon what you said. Right. He judged me based on how I respond to what you said. Yes. Your actions will not change God's attitude about me if I don't let your actions change my attitude towards you. Amen. And if you don't learn this, I don't care how many people pray for you, faith will not work in a heart that has an offense. Sometimes we wonder why people don't get their healing. You don't know about their lives. You fast, you pray, seem like nothing ever happened. Somewhere there's an offense. Somewhere there's a hindrance to that faith. So let's look at it. Jesus tells us that our behavior must radically differ from that of the world. You can expect it in the world to curse, to fuss, to throw spitballs or whatever. Because they don't know no better. But God expects us to react, to respond totally different from the ways of the world. I like what Paul stated there in Romans the 12th chapter, verse number 21. Notice what Paul stated there in Romans 12, verse number 20, 21. This is what he said. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So never let another person's attitude or immaturity interfere with where God's going to take you. And he said, evil, but he said, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. But notice what he stated there in verse 14, Romans 12, verse 14. He said, bless them which persecute you. That ain't easy. He said, bless and curse not. Don't curse them not because they crossed in front of you. Find a way to be a blessing to people. I like what Peter said. Look at 1 Peter. Notice what Peter stated there in 1 Peter 3. 
Verse 8, finally, be you all of one mind, have a compassion one of another. Love us, brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil. Verse 9, a railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that you are down to call, that you might inherit a blessing. And then notice what he said there in verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips that they speak no gap. Next verse. Let him run from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Next verse. This is why. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against him or do or give place to evil. We're going to have fun here this morning. How do you respond to someone who has reacted to you wrong? Do you invoke calamity or destruction upon that person? You ever heard someone say that, you know, when someone doing wrong, say, God's going to, and something happened to say, I knew God was going to get them. <laughs> right, God's going to beat them up because they looked at you wrong. Or God's going to do something bad to them because they responded to you. I knew God was going to get them. You're bringing something on God that God, that's not God's character. It's to do evil to evil. Or do wrong to evil. That's the devil's character. And don't put God in the devil's class. And we're cursing. No, no, no. Now let's look at this right here. This is what God is. This is God's love chapter. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8. He said love suffers long. And it's kind. That's God. Love does not envy. That's God. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. That's God. Does not behave rudely. That's God. Does not seek his own. That's God. But notice what he said. It's not provoked. And now everybody in the read this. Thinks no evil. So you can't say, I knew God was going to get him. God do not let his mind go to that. God thinks on that which is lovely, good, just, pure, honest, a good report. That's how God thinks. God don't think evil. I repeat, God do not think evil. God does not have to get someone because they did you wrong. He said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Bless them that curse you. And God don't think evil. So if you're thinking evil or someone did something evil to you, that thought didn't come from God. You say, I discern. No, you suspicion. Because God don't think evil. And God don't give you evil thoughts. And he don't plant evil thoughts in your mind. And then Paul, and in, in Proverbs 4, 23, he said, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the forces of the issues of life. You have to guard your heart. Don't take an offense and don't let rocks get in your heart because it interferes with your faith. Amen. Now, notice right there in verse 8, love does not rejoice in iniquity, love, but love rejoices in the truth. Love burns all things. Love bleeds all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Verse 7 and notice what he said in verse 8. Love never fails. Where there's prophecies, they will fail. Where there's tongues, they will cease. Where there's knowledge, it will vanish away. That should be the first lesson a Christian learns when they get saved. It's the importance of love. For he that loveth knoweth God, or he or she that loveth not, no, it's not God, for God is love. I was very concerned when we had a guest minister here, when I learned a number of our staff people that had offenses in their heart and was fasting with me, praying in tongues with me. But we didn't get a whole lot of response to our fast and our prayers because we had offenses. I was wondering why there's no power. Wonder why people are not getting healed. Because God cannot lie. But yet if people have offenses, if you got people in your staff 
on your staff with offenses in the heart. The Bible says one sinner can destroy the whole body. And if you got people on your staff who haven't grown to the place where they can handle offenses, because Jesus said in Luke 17, 1, he said, offense is going to come because that's the devil's game. He said, woe be to the person that will bring them or give them. Be careful how you say things to someone that brings offense between friends or companions. You have to be careful how you communicate because you don't never say things to separate friends or bring division or device in the generation, in the church, in a relationship. Because Jesus said, woe be to the person that will take an offense, but he said also woe to the person that will give an offense. So let's look at this. Notice Jesus still teaching. This is the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus was teaching his apostles and his disciples because he wouldn't be with them long. So he was educating them on how to overcome the wicked one. And then he said, you have heard that it was said. He's referring back to the law when he say that you have heard that it was said. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But now he's bringing them into a new dispensation of grace. And then he said, but I say to you, he's now bringing you into another law. He said, this was said of old. You hear that from the apostle. But now he said, I'm saying something different. He said, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and even try to persecute you. And that ain't easy. But yet, when you're able to do this, this is a sign of spiritual growth. And then notice, this is why he said that, that you may be sons and daughters of your father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And send rain on the just and on the unjust. You are the one that benefits when you don't take an offense. But when you take an offense, you take on that person, the offender's sin. We got to get offenses out of the church if we're going to take the city. If we're going to get our prayers answered. If we're going to be more effective in the assignment that God has given us, we got to keep offenses out of our personal life, out of our generations, out of ourselves, out of our family. Wherever we are, we're not quick to take offense. We're not like the world. We don't take an offense because people look at us wrong. We learn the value of blessing people because this is how you keep offenses out of your heart. Bless people that curse you. Pray for people that try to use you. Love those that hate you. That's a sign of maturity when we're able to get along with one another. And even if you are taking offense, I'm not going to come down to that level. Now watch this, guys, right here. So what should you do when someone offends you? I knew you were going to ask that question, so I put an answer up there for you. A few basic things, steps, to help us move towards a Christ-centered response. To people that will offend you. If you don't learn how to love the unlovable, you will not get your prayers answered. And you're just going to make time. And you know, you in the world will wonder, I wonder if anything to that Christian wall. I don't see miracles. They're on my level. They have the same problems I have. And if you act like the world, you will have the same problems. So the first thing you must learn to do to not take an offense is to forgive the offender. Don't never take on an offense of someone else's. You have to be quick to forgive. Now look at this, watch this right here, guys. Hurt people, when you're not, hurt, hurt when you're not addressed properly, turns into what? Bitterness and an unforgiving spirit. When someone hurts you, and if you don't go to the scripture, you'd become bitter towards that person and you have an unforgiving spirit. If you don't make a practice when someone offends you, and if you don't go to the Bible and walk it out. Walk out Matthew 4, 5, 4 to 3, 4 to 4, and 4 to 5, you will take an offense. And you will know when you're taking offense because you attack that person with words. You don't have anything good to say about them. You say it in a sneaky way to tear down their character. And you go to your friend who will join you in your sin. 
Then you got two friends out of the will of God, and they'll fast with you and pray with you and speak in tongues, but they ain't done nothing to happen. And the Bible says they have a form of godliness, but they have denied the power. Amen. Something else. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, we all have spiritual resources to truly forgive others. We need to read that, Matthew 18, 21 through 35. If you can put it on the screen, it'll be good for those that didn't bring the Bible. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. They're going to put it on the screen and we'll read it. Notice, let's read. Then came Peter to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him to seven times? Verse, next verse. Jesus said unto Peter, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but unto seventy times, seven in a day. That's 490 times in a day if someone offends you. He said, if they offend you 490 times in a day, you are to forgive them. Next, notice, uh, next verse. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king. Now he gives us an analogy of what the kingdom of heaven is like, which will take account of his servant. Next, and when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Next, but for as much as he had not to pay he could not pay his bill. His Lord commanded him to be so, and his wife and his children, and all that he had, and papers to be made. Next. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped God, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Next. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Next. But the same servant, went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat and started choking him. Pay me my money. That sounds like some of us, don't it? We want people to be merciful with us, but now you're gonna give me my money. But notice, Next verse. And his fellow servants fell down at his feet and besought him, begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee the same thing he said to his master. Next. And he would not have patience or have compassion, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Next. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told it unto the Lord and all that he had done. Next. Then the Lord, then his Lord afterward, then his Lord after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave you of your debt because thou desired me. Next. So does not thou have also had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? See, this is why you got to be merciful to people who are in their own. Because the Bible says the merciful shall attain mercy. Don't be hard on people when they make an error. Don't be hard on people when they make a mistake. Learn to be forgiven and be like Jesus, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Next verse. And his Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he shall pay all that was due unto him. Verse 35. Now this is what I want to get to right here. Everyone look at this on verse 35. So likewise, notice what God said, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. Now this is the key. If you from your heart, not your head, if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother, they are trespassing. Notice he's dealing with the heart, not with the head. Why? Because you'll know when you have forgiven someone, you won't keep talking about it. Because the Bible says everything flows from the heart. Matthew 12, 35. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If you're still talking about it, you're still holding on to it. If you're still talking about it, you haven't forgiven that person. You forgave them for a week. But now you want to talk about it again. What you're saying is I didn't get rid of it. So he's saying you got to learn how to forgive from your heart. And the only way to forgive from your heart is when someone offends you, 
You forgive that person and nail it to the cross. Amen. Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. God nailed our sins to the cross and he said, I will remember them no longer because it's been washed in the blood. And when you do that, tell it to the devil, I won't talk about this any longer. When the devil bring the thought back, say, no, I forgave that person and I place it up on Jesus and I refuse to talk about it again. I will not relive that life. I will not relive that situation. And this is what he said. You have to forgive from your heart. The devil can bring it back into your mind, but don't let it get down into your heart. And you know when it gets down in your heart, you want to talk about it. Let's look at the next one. Ephesians. The Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Turn over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. All right, verse 29. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let's go back to 28. Verse 28. Uh, let's go to back forward. Go forward. Go, back. go to the verse where it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Verse, let's look at verse 29. And right there, 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So when you take an offense or give an offense, the Holy Spirit is grieved because he knows he cannot fulfill his assignment. When you say things that causes offenses or separate a friends, the Holy Spirit is grieved because he knows that he cannot fulfill his assignment. And then notice he said, verse number 31, he said, and let all bitterness and wrath and anger and glamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. See, when you do these things, the Holy Spirit is grieved. And then notice that the next verse there. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And then he goes into chapter 5, verse 1. Notice what he stated there. Be ye therefore followers of God, imitators of God as dear children. Verse 2. And walk in love. As Christ also has forgave, has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You got to learn that, guys. And if you don't learn that, your faith will not work. Go back to the PowerPoint. Are you out there? Tell your neighbors, I'm going to practice on you how to walk in love. If we're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders, we got to learn this. Learn how to love the unlovable. Don't say things that separate friends. Hallelujah. Don't say things to bring strife to the relationship. Hurt people hurt folks. And when you're hurt, if you don't go back to the word, that hurt will turn into bitterness and unforgiven spirit. And you know, because you start attacking people with words. You don't have nothing good to say about that person. There's something else. Notice right through, we have the spiritual resources that we learn now how to forgive from the heart. That yeah, we're learning how to forgive from the heart. And something else we're learning. Also, when you release someone from the debt he or she owes you, like an offense, you are free to see that person the way Christ sees them. And anger and bitterness no longer control. A rule your decision making. You got to see people the same way that God sees them. And the only way you can see people the way God sees them is get the offense and the strife and the bitterness and all of the things that is contrary to the word of God out of your heart. And the only way to get it out of your heart, you have to nail that sin to the cross. We're going to have church. The second thing you're going to learn you got to seek to understand before seeking to be understood. We fight to be understood, but we don't put a lot of effort to understand. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and all they're getting, get understanding. 
And then they tell us in Proverbs, I think 21, 15, or 16, the man or the woman that wanders the way out of the understanding will, will remain in the congregation of the dead. Yes. See, around the dead, there's no life, lifeless, inoperative. And if you stay there in offense, you will remain in the congregation of the dead, and there's no fruit. There's no production. Because you refuse to understand the person that's communicating with you. And let's look at this, guys. Practice the skill of listening and try to imagine the perspective of the offender. Feel them out. See why they are taking offense. And the only way that you can feel them out or see their perspective or their view of what's going on is by listening. Good communication is 80% listening and 20% talking. And the only way that we can have understanding is listen to the offender. And that ain't easy. And you don't listen to defend your stand. You listen to understand what they're saying. Something else. What might have motivated that person to act like that? And the only way you can know what might have motivated them is by allowing them to communicate their feelings. Something else. What is going on in that person's life that they would take an offense like that? You don't know. Don't play God and assume that you're in the spirit and you know. Let them talk. The best way to get understanding from an offender is to let them talk. And you just become a listener, a springing board. Something else. Many times a person who hurts you is a victim of hurt. And a lot of times we attack people or we want people to hurt like we hurt. Hurt folks, hurt folks. Hurt people, hurt people. And most of the time you can trace it back to some kind of something that's happened in their lives. It may have happened as a child. You don't have to know. And they live all of their life hurting people because they never learn how to correct that anger or get that anger out of them. Something else. Understanding the offender's private pains could be a key step towards what? Reconciliation or preventing further conflict. Understanding is the key to removing offenses. And the only way that I can get understanding is give you a voice or give you an ear to listen and allow you to tell me how you feel. Amen. Learning how to love the unlovable. Something else. The number three, speak with non-combative yet truthful words. You'll never have a listening ear if you attack people with words. Something else. Speaking truth and love does not mean that your words will lack a sharp point. Sometimes truth can feel very settling. Settling. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, around verse 18 of Sorna, it says, we grow up and speak the truth in love. See, one thing about the Holy Spirit, he is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit will not put people under con condemnation, but he will convict people. See, if you speak the truth in love, you give the Holy Spirit something to work with. But if you speak the truth in a harsh way to put people under condemnation, the Holy Spirit won't touch it. I can, I can preach you under condemnation, but I can't preach you under conviction. Amen. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Amen. But if I tell the truth in love, the Holy Spirit has something to work with. But if I tell you the truth to condemn you, the Holy Spirit is not in that. Amen. So when you are trying to express yourself, you don't express yourself to make that person feel sorry. You express yourself to give an understanding or let them understand how you feel. Never do we attack people with words. Because people won't listen to you if you attack them with words. They're closed their ear, they're closed their life, they're closed their spirit to what you have to say. But now if you learn how to speak the truth and love, people will listen. Sometimes it's not so much as what you say, it's how you say it. We've got to learn how to commu communicate our differences if our church is going to grow. Amen. If our sales and our generation is going to grow. 
We got to learn how to communicate to the unkind, the unlovable. Learn how to listen to people who say things that you really don't want to hear. Something else. The individual who has wounded you may need to grapple with some tough issues in their lives. They just need someone that will just listen to them. Just give an ear. Only the Lord can work with a person's heart. But he asks you to continue to extend patience and love. Again, as I stated, only God can put a person under conviction. I can put you under condemnation by telling you how sorry you are for what you did. How wrong you are for what you said. You shouldn't do that. Beat you up with words and you feel so bad. That's condemnation. And you feel good because you put them under condemnation. And they cried because you put them under condemnation. But you can't get no healing under condemnation. You may cry a tear or two, but it don't last long. There is no healing when you put people under condemnation over what they did. But there is a healing when you say it in love and allow the Holy Spirit to deal with their heart. And only the Holy Spirit can put people under conviction. My job is to tell the truth. Or speak the truth in love. And then after you speak the truth in love, you leave it up to the Holy Spirit. One thing about it, once you tell the truth or hear the truth, you can go through hell and back. You won't forget it. I've been there. I'm a preacher's kid. Been around the church all my life. I know from before I got saved, when I was in the military, I did some wrong things, but I can never forget. I could always hear what mom and daddy said. Most of you can relate to that. When you're in the club, <laughs> all you can hear is what that preacher said. You know that? Some of you heard my voice every now and then. What did you say? You know that? That's one thing about the Bible or the word or the truth. You can't get it away from it once you hear it. And one thing about it, God will keep it to her. God won't condemn you, but he will convict you. Now let's look at this. God has to deal with the heart. Man deals with the outward appearance, but God deals with the heart. Now watch this, guys. Who knows, maybe someday your worst enemy could become your best friend. I won't put you on the spot, but some of you may have turned an enemy into a friend. That is God's objective. That's why God teaches us like this, to love them and bless them and pray for them. He wants to turn your enemy into a friend. That could someday be your greatest friend, the person who rubbed you wrong today. They could be a great blessing to you later. Don't ever count someone off because they offended you. Just start walking in love to watch them. And you'll be amazed what might happen in that relationship later. Watch this, guys. Whatever the results, you can be sure of God's blessing as you seek his ways of dealing with those who have offended you. And he teaches us in the word in 1 Peter 3, verses 10 and 8. Be not overcome with Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome with evil with good. Don't render railing for railing. Evil for evil, but contrary wise. Blessing. Know that you are called to be a blessing. God called you to be a blessing. So God allows things to happen. Or whatever happened, don't never come down to the level of the offender. And how do you come down to the level of offender? You attack them back the same way they attack you. Amen. Well, they cursed me, I'm going to curse them. They looked at me wrong, I'm going to look at them. They talked about me, I'm going to find somebody to talk about too, about them. No one wins in that. Our church has to grow up. 
And the only way our church will grow up, the only way the family is going to grow up, the only way you're going to grow up or any of us grow up, we've got to learn how to be kind to the unkind and love the unlovable. And by all means, don't say things that separate friends. If your word is going to separate friends or bring strife and division in the generation or in the cell or either of the church, shut your mouth up. Because we learn maturity, a mature Christian has learned how to communicate the right words. Now, hey guys, that's what God wants you to do is turn your enemy into a friend. And it starts by forgiving and learning how to understand or listen to why they took an offense. The church has to grow up. We know we're in this world, but we're not of this world. God wants to release miracles in our lives. And the only way Satan can stop the miracle power of God is to get us to take offense. I don't care how many times you come down here to this altar to be healed or whatever there. If you know you got offense in your heart, it won't work. You notice I've been, uh, read, let me give you another scripture. Matthew 5. Put it on the screen. I think it's Matthew 5. Get Matthew 5 right quickly. Verse 23. Matthew 5, 23. Notice there in Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, notice what Jesus said. If thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remember that thy brother has all against thee, verse number 24, notice what he said. You leave your gift here at this altar and go thy way first to be reconciled to thy brother, and then you come back to the altar. And then you come back and offer your gifts. This is Jesus talking. He said, if you know you got all in your heart against your neighbor or your brother or they're mad at you, he said, no, leave your gifts here because you come down here and want someone to pray for you, but you know you got offense in your heart. He said, leave your gift here. Leave your tithes here. Leave your offering here. But go get things right. And then come back and present it to God. Verse number 25, notice what he said. Agree with your adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Wow, that's at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the what? Officer and thou art be cast into prison. That's what the devil, the devil doesn't want you to forgive. Forgive. Because he wants to cast you into prison. And then notice the next verse. Verily I say unto thee, he said, Thou shalt by no means come out thence until I have paid the what? Othermost further. This thing is serious, man. Offense is dangerous to the walk of faith. Tell your neighbors, I don't want to go to prison. Can I give you another scripture? Look at 2 Timothy 2.26. I get up here, these scriptures start coming at me, boy, I tell you. Notice there in 2 Timothy 2.26. Notice on the screen. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. When Satan finds the errors of your offense, he'll control your life. Because he said, if you don't recover yourself from the worst snare of the devil, he will keep you in jail. He will con the devil will get you and take an offense at his will. Because he knows, he studies our lives to find who can get us an offense. And the Bible says, they are taken captive at his will. Because they didn't learn how to control their feelings. Learn to be quick to forgive and forget. And you know when you have forgiven because you will put it on the cross and you will not talk about it again. If you're still talking about it, you haven't forgiven that person. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Tell your neighbor, turn that enemy into a friend. Now, how do you normally respond to a person 
who have offended you. Don't tell nobody. Because we know we have watched you before. But we're going to change. You know, I see things from the pulpit. I seen people come in and say to some of these folks seat around here. <laughs> Boy, they look like a toe frog. I've been out there in the pulpit and I saw some reaction from some of these saints around here. Somebody sat in that little pat seat. <laughs> Boy, they give some looks that almost was frightened Jesus. I could tell you a whole lot of stories I've seen from up here. <laughs> Christians, tongue talkers, leaders. Amen. Don't be quick to take an offense. Sometimes you have to take the second seat. You don't have to. You don't have to sit in the first seat. Sometimes you have to sit in the second seat to have harmony. As long as you got a seat. Are y'all still out there? We got to have harmony. We have to have unity. There has to be agreement. We cannot afford to allow offenses to come and stop the will of God from being done. Amen. Let's look at this. To live the Christian life is to allow Jesus to live his life in and through you. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, he said, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but it's Christ that lived within me, within me. And he said, in the life which I now live, I live in the flesh, I live it by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. So now it's Christ living in us and through us. So if we're going to live this Christian life, it's to allow Jesus to live his life in us and through us. So therefore you have to keep offenses out of your heart. You have, that's your job. Is to keep offenses out of your heart. And the only way that we can keep offenses out of our heart, we've got to learn how to love the unlovable. Amen. How, to be unkind, how to be kind to the unkind. Amen. Better like to do unto others as you will have them to do. Treat people like you want to be treated. Amen. Forgive people like you want to be forgiven Amen. when you are in error. That's right. Amen. Amen. Your faith will work then. Amen. Something else. No Christian has ever been called to go along in this Christian journey of this walk of faith. God has promised to walk with us. He's assigned the Holy Spirit to help you, to take you there. But you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit cannot function where there are offenses. He will not function until we get it right. We're getting ready to start back on the teachings on faith Sunday. The third phase of faith in Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, while you're staying praying, stand praying, forgive. He teaches about believing, teaches about speaking. The third phase of faith is forgiving. While Jesus said, while you're staying praying, forgive. Now, it comes down to this, guys. Galatians 5, 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, not on circumstances, but notice what he said, but faith which worketh by love. If the devil gets you out of love, he'll shut down your faith. Amen. Faith will only work where there's an established walk of love. That's how Satan controls our lives, get us to take an offense. Because I don't care how many people lay hands upon you, you get in the offense. Lord, this lottery is going on. If you just let me win this $500 million. <laughs> I claim this $500 million. It's mine. I got it. But if you got no fist in your heart, that pride didn't get to the top of the ceiling. Don't tell nobody I'm talking to you. Everybody's claiming that $500 million. I'm claiming it myself. 
I could do a whole lot with that, couldn't I? <laughs> Shoot, man. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, faith worketh by love. Never forget that. Your faith will not work when you take an offense in your heart. And something else. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 notice, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, not going to, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing of word in the heavenly places in Christ. When you get in offense, it doesn't work. God has already blessed you where? In heavenly places in Christ. First of all, according as he has chosen us in him. God has blessed us. He has chosen us in him. Before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The love walk is essential to the faith walk. Because faith worketh out by love. God expects us to love one another as he loves us. We learn that in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. But also God expects us to forgive one another and forget the offenses of others as he forgives us and forgets ours. God wants us to treat one another like he treats us. The same way that God treats us, he wants us to practice on one another. And if we don't learn that, a lot of prayers will be aborted. Amen. You will disqualify yourself in the faith walk if you don't learn how to love the unlovable. How to be kind to the people that is not kind to you. How to communicate about those people who are mean towards you. Don't never let another person in maturity interfere with your destiny. Guess what? That's all I have for you tonight. He that knoweth God is love, and everyone that loveth knoweth God, and he or she that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Come on, St. Peter's. It's time for this church to grow up. It's time for us to grow up individually. It's time for each one of us to grow up so that we can get our prayers answered so that God can take us all to that next level. Amen. Taking your business to the next level. Taking your family to the next level. Taking your generation to the next level. It's your sale will take you to the next level. You might get that $500 million, but don't forget to pay your tithe. <laughs> don't you forget You know, God bless one guy, God bless one young man, he went to church here. God blessed him good. You know what he said? That's too much money to give the church. And you know what? That dollar choked his future. God had much more for him, but he couldn't control it. Nathan, you know what I'm talking about. He said that's too much money. God blessed him. He said that's too much money to give the church. And that, that sting your attitude choked his future. Now, don't you forget when you, they call your name. <laughs> don't let that choke your future. Because the same God that got that to you will get some more to you. And don't you use your time to get that money. <laughs> that has choked your future. That's a prison. Let me leave that alone. I'm not going to tell extra show of hands, but just keep it in your pocket. Keep your hands in your pocket. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. I'm praying for you that you get it, though. <laughs> Lord, let him fall in this house. Yeah, let him fall in this house. But don't let somebody tie get it. Let somebody who knows how to tie. No. Might as well get somebody here. Let me leave. I get that wrong. <laughs> it would be good. That wouldn't. <laughs> Help us, Jesus.
Say, help me, Lord, help me. Come on, Rodney, you gonna pay them tithes off on that 500 million? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, come on, guys, let's make that confession. Anyone need an alpha envelope, just raise your hand.